Welcome into Press Box Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of Press Box and PressBoxOnline.com. With us is our managing part, a managing publisher of a managing editor, excuse me, of Press Box and PressBoxOnline.com, Luke Jackson. Ross Grimsley is in Florida, as everybody that watches these Zooms knows, and he may or may not join us, has no internet, and he's trying to get his phone fixed so he can possibly join us. So we don't usually allow pop-ins on these, but if uh, Ross pops in, we'll be glad to talk to him. Luke Jackson, before we start talking baseball, just thought I'd ask you, I thought yesterday's win by the Ravens was a really nice, nicely played game by the team. Yeah, yeah, that was a fun watch. Uh, when uh, Obviously, when Lamar's rolling and Derrick Henry's rolling, um, it's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, to be sure, and forces uh, defenses to make decisions on what they want to stop, and that m- means you can make plays in other ways. So yeah. uh, that was that was fun. I thought Lamar played in a very very good football game yesterday. All right, and and showed that they've got an offense. Frankly, I didn't expect to see this, which is really really difficult to pin down defensively. What well, yeah, doing. Washington didn't have anybody who could cover Zay Flowers. Yep. And that was a big issue for them last. And so they decided to stack the box. They decided to try to make sure that Derrick Henry couldn't control the tempo of the game. So Zay Flowers had a career day. And yep. so, and that's when you have a really good offense, when you right. have multiple ways you can win. And then at the, at after they zeroed in on Zay a little bit more, Derrick got his, he got fed the ball plenty. Yeah. And I thought Rashad Bateman had a few nice plays as well. And, and Andrews. Andrews all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, his first touchdown of the year. Usually it doesn't take six games for him, uh, but they've got a lot of weapons, and they've got a lot of mouths to feed, and typically they're not going to throw that much, so there's not that many targets to go around. All right, let's move back over to the the national pastime, baseball. We've got the playoffs going on tonight. The Cleveland Guardians are at New York at Yankee Stadium for game one of that series. Ex-Oriole Alex Cobb who's only started, I believe, three games in the regular season this year, was picked up at the trade deadline. Uh, He'll go up against Carlos Rodon. uh, And in just moments, uh, we're going to have the game between the Mets and the Dodgers. The Dodgers are already up one to nothing in games with a, was a nine nothing victory last night. Correct, Luke? Yes. And x figured in that, Jack Flaherty, Hey, oh, you and I were texting, and we were saying that, boy, this version of Jack Flaherty would have been very helpful against the Rangers last yeah. year. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, I still, looks you like know, totally it's funny. It's funny. He probably would have been a big help last year, and we probably might might have won two or three more games. Mm-hmm. I still don't think we would have re-signed him because of the finances of the Angelos' ownership at that particular mm-hmm. time. Okay? Uh, and that's not a knock at John. It's just the realities of the finances he had to deal with uh but he pitched a beautiful ball game uh kodai sanga you can't say exactly the same thing for him Again, yeah that was a rough go yeah uh, i just was... couldn't find the plate and you could see with some of those pitches toward the end of the first inning he was aiming he was just hoping to throw a strike and that's not a great situation to be in i don't think that they can throw him again this postseason considering how I know he looked okay against Philadelphia, but he looked like a guy who threw what one regular season start. Yeah. That's, that's what it was like spring training for him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was like a, like a first outing of spring training kind of outing. Absolutely. Yeah. I would see him possibly being used as they go on. If they, if they were to get past Mm -hmm. the Dodgers, maybe he can be, a, you know, an inning guy, an inning two-thirds guy in the middle of the game. But to start him is asking an awful, awful lot. Yeah, I think they were hoping to get three innings out of him yesterday, uh, about 45 to 50 pitches. Um, he might have gotten a 45 to 50 pitch if they kept him going in the second inning, but uh, they they tried to salvage it, just wasn't meant to be. And that honestly, that kind of makes it easy to move on to the next game. Uh, and they got Sean Manaya going. Uh, he looked great. 
in the uh, wild card and the uh, in the divisional round. So hopefully for the Mets' sake, uh, they can tie it up at one. We've got a really long, interesting series between these two uh, clubs because I think as the series goes on, it might favor the Mets a little bit because they got more starting pitching. Uh, whereas you know, today the Dodgers have to go with a bullpen game, and then they have to at some point lean on Walker Bueller, who the is Dodgers really have- though that they're showing it on the screen right now. The last thirty three innings, zero runs allowed. Yeah, twenty pitchers used, yep. and I've got my screen uh, zero one zero for fourteen with runners in scoring position, a one twenty seven batting average. I said in my postseason write up. I think I had the Dodgers second. I had mm-hmm. the Padres one, Dodgers second. I said they can smother you with relief pitchers. Yep. But who's going to start the games? Right. And they've got Flaherty, and they may have Yamamoto. And yeah, and, and and I will say that Flaherty did look awesome yesterday. Yeah, I mean, he, he looks a lot healthier than he looked uh, here in Baltimore, and the delivery is a lot crisper. Uh, the breaking balls are sharper, both the slider and the curveball, and he's throwing harder. And so, and when you're healthier, you're probably a lot more confident on the mound. And so he just looks a lot better. And like I said, I, th- this version of Jack Flaherty would have been very helpful in game two of the uh, ALDS against the uh, Rangers last year. No so question. That's neither that. here nor there. That's water. We'll, under dig, the we'll dig into this a little bit more, both series. I wanted to actually start, even though we got off. And I want to remind yeah. everybody that we appreciate your viewing uh, Press Box Live Zooms. We hope you'll uh, like them, share them. And what's the other thing, Luke? Like, share, and follow us, right? There you go. There that you seems go. right. All right. And we're also brought to you by the Costas Inn, the one and only Costas Inn. 52 years at 4100 North Point Boulevard. So they must be doing something right, Luke, right? Absolutely. All right. Hey, um, Orioles, um, not unbelievably uh, earth shattering, but there are changes already in the coaching staff and you've got new news today. We knew about uh, Freddie Gonzalez. We knew about what was the second guy that was uh, Jose go. Hernandez was Jose like Hernandez. And Ryan and Fuller. We knew about like Ryan Fuller, but now you tell me that Matt uh, Fork, Fork, Schulte. Uh, Fork Schulte is, is not going to be back either. And this was more mutual uh, by the, this, his decision to return to the Minnesota Twins organization. Well, yeah, I don't know the the full details of it, but it was an uh, excuse me reported uh, by multiple folks uh, on Twitter uh, this afternoon that he decided to go back to Minnesota, which is where he came from. Right. I think it's to take a big league uh, hitting coach job. So I don't know the details of that. I don't know if it was a mutual th- I, like I don't know, but he's not going to be back. That's the bottom line. Okay, it's it's just interesting, Luke. And there was a lot of fan clamoring the second half of the year because mm-hmm. the first half of the year, the offense seemed for the most part, perfectly fine. And we were all worried. Oh, I think it was tops in the majors and run scoring. Right. We were all worried about the pitching and Mike Elias admitted that at the trade deadline that perhaps, but, and by the way, at the trade deadline, he didn't know that Jordan Westberg was going to get hurt the next big blow. Day. Yep. And this six week, uh, but he picked up Austin Slater and Eloy Jimenez, and they did, they weren't a big help. Slater was a nice little usable player here and there. Right. Eloy was not much. He was a humorous interview, <laughs> but I don't expect him to be back for that. Um, but this was an offense that for all of 23 and the first three months of 24 was pretty darn good. Yep. Three months down the tubes, and – both hitting coaches are gone. Do you think the Orioles return to maybe a more traditional hitting coach, or do you think they're still going to go with one of these guys or twosome that they get out of the uh, academies? That is a very good question, and one that I am fascinated to learn the answer to uh, when the time comes. I don't know if this indicates that they're just going to change the messenger and the philosophies are going to stay the same. Right. Or if they're going to tweak the philosophy a little bit. Uh, We all know what the philosophy has been the past few years, that they look for mistakes in the middle of the plate and they try to crush them as best they can. That's basically the philosophy. And there's nothing 
wrong with that. It's just that when you face quality pitching, and that's what you face in the playoffs, when quality pitch, pitchers execute, you don't get mistakes in the middle, middle of the plate, or you don't get very many. And so over the course of 162, that philosophy is going to work because you face a lot of third, fourth, fifth starters, a lot of triple A bullpen arms, and you can put up some pretty big run totals uh, at times. And they've got some very talented hitters uh, who are going to be pretty good over 162, no matter who the hitting coach is. Uh, but uh, they did have some injuries in the second half. And at times it seemed like <laughs> particularly – in big spots that they were trying to win an exit velocity contest rather than win a baseball game and do what it takes, the little Good things to put it. that it takes a little bit. And so that's what we saw a lot of. And so maybe Mike got sick of that. Maybe he thought that the philosophy had been taken too far. I don't know. We'll see. And maybe as you mentioned, they go back to more of a traditional hitting coach, head hitting coach who. You know, spent 10 years in a major league box. Yeah. We like, we don't there's know. Not a we, lot of like, major league. We're just going to have on, on Brandon's staff. No, there's not. There's yeah. really not. Uh, so that, that's one thing to keep an eye on. Uh, bench coach, Freddie Gonzalez was for mm -hmm. all intents and purposes. I don't know that it, we ever got the title of bench coach or assistant manager, but, uh, and Freddie Lindor, uh, Francisco Lindor, Lindor, Lindor yeah. in front, one to nothing. Uh, on the leadoff home run uh, or second batter home run uh, off of Ryan Brazier, all right? And we'll talk about that when we go back to that. But Freddy Gonzalez is gone. Do you think it's possible that they are – I'm not talking about a manager in waiting, but and, – and I don't know if I've got the right guy. I'm talking about – because Brandon Hyde's pretty friendly with mm -hmm. Joe Madden. Right. But do you think they'd look for somebody that could be like Joe Torrey's Don analytic guy, mm -hmm. you know, that just knows all the numbers? Or do you think like a Mike Socia or a Joe Madden could could take a job like that? So Based on the way you asked that, you're I think you're curious to see if they do hire a bigger name. It's not only right? a bigger name. But I mean, the name's one thing. It's just I don't I, I always liked Freddie. We had him on several shows, and I don't know the coaches the way I used to right. 25, 30 years ago, where you can walk in into the coach. The coaches aren't even in the locker room, so you can't really get right. to them. Uh it's not so much the name. It's somebody that, that might really tell Brandon how he feels, you know, about mm -hmm. something. Whereas I don't know, I'm not saying Freddie just powered to Brandon Hyde, but I just don't know that he was strong enough uh, to, to tell him what he really felt or to just sort of back up what Brandon was going to do. Right. Um, yeah. I, I guess we're we're not totally sure what exactly the bench coach role is for the Orioles, and maybe that yeah. will change. Maybe Brandon wants that role to change a little bit, and as such, wants a different guy because I mean, Brandon and Freddie have go back a ways. They, they go, go back, back to, a long way to the, uh, to the Marlins organization, so they it wasn't easy to, for him, I know. right? I'm sure I'm sure this was not an easy uh, decision to make. Um, so uh, again, but they we'll made it to, pretty. They made it pretty quickly. Yeah, and they do and that I a know, lot of times to give the person an opportunity right. and, to have. I know Freddie has some desire to get back into a manager's role. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen at the major league level for him, right? Maybe it will. Who knows? Um, but you know, we'll see. Okay. Um you you didn't answer the question. So you said you did answer the question. I just think it was interesting his relationship with Joe Madden. Okay. And every once in a while, we've seen a guy that's away a couple of years. My gut feeling is gets the itch. Joe Madden's ego, though, is hey, I want to be the man. Right. Uh, you know, I'd even throw in Buck Showalter to that extent. You know, but I don't think that's happening here in Baltimore. Right. You know? Yeah, and you never uh, know. You know, sometimes uh, former managers and former coaches who say they're retired, and we saw this with Terry Francona, suddenly get the yep. itch. And so it might be someone yeah. who's out of the box. I don't know. Yeah. Bruce yep. Bochy 
you know, yeah. or maybe it'll be Tom Kelly. Maybe we'll be Stan Charles. Or Ron Gar- we'll Ron have a Garden lot of ideas for Brandon. Ron Garden hires. All right. <laughs> um, the um, the postseason, moving back over to the postseason. Yep. I'll tell you what. Let me get my Costas uh, commercial sure. out of the way. Not out yeah. of the way because it's an important up. part. They just – Nimmo just walk. you got your thumbs, thumbs up. So we've got a live baseball game on, and I don't usually refer to these because by the time an awful lot of our audience is watching this, the game is over. So John Colson will yell at me. This isn't radio live radio so anyway um the costas in as we always talk about the costas in it's been there for over 50 years at the same location fantastic monday through friday nightly specials uh that are really kind of pocket friendly and really uh will whet your appetite all, all kinds seafood beef chicken pasta dishes um and then we get uh, the crabs at the costas in the steam crabs, the crab cakes, and the crab soup are all extraordinary. The website is costasin.com. You can also order up your food online, pay for it online, and you don't even have to get out of your car when you get to the Costas Inn. They'll bring it out to your car and take out, or curbside as it's called today, is immaculately packed with grandma's cream of crab soup isn't going to spill on your crab cake everything is sealed perfectly uh and easily in really sturdy bags uh great food the costas in again they've been there for over 50 years please try them out don't stand the fan and the guys on the zoom at press box gave them thumbs up Four thumbs up when Ross isn't here, but when Ross is here, it's six thumbs up. That's in. My friends, going on 24, 30 years, 30 years, Nick and Pete and uh, Mr. Triantopoulos and his lovely wife have been good friends and supporters of all the guys. Uh, one other thing, uh, Maryland Five Star is coming up, uh, and I'll be out there for part of the day on Thursday, and I'll be out of there, out there part of the day on Saturday. There two of the days uh, eventing at its finest out in Cecil County. It's going to be a glorious kind of weekend. You know, chill will be in the air a little bit. It'll probably be in the 60s, maybe even 70 degrees. If you only can come out one day, Friday and Saturday are Thursday and Friday are dressage. Saturday is the cross country. That is the day for incredible views out there at the five-star at Fair Hills, all right? The Mars five-star. All right, back talking uh, baseball with Luke Jackson. Ross is unable to join us because his internet is down in Bradenton, Florida. Uh, but he is oh, he and his wife, Bert, are okay. Um, Luke, these two series, the Yankees beat the Guardians four games to two in their series. Uh, during the course of the regular season. Tonight is the first game of that matchup. Um, are you in agreement with me that this is just a big ask of the Cleveland Guardians, given the state of their starting pitching? Yeah, I 100% agree. I think this is a big ask of their bullpen over the course of a seven-game series. We saw Cleveland use all of their top arms out of the bullpen, and there's four of them in all five games of that ALDS against the Tigers. And by the fifth game, you could see some wear and tear on a couple of those guys. It's not like you're going to be able to use those top arms all seven games against the Yankees. They're going to have to be more judicious about how they use those guys. And I just don't know if Cleveland has enough ways to beat you. In other words, the way Cleveland wins is that basically they get to the sixth inning with a lead and then they can go to Kate Smith. They smother you with their three and guys. And they smother you with the, the high end guys. Yeah, they're, they're and high then, end. And, and, yeah, and then you got Emmanuel Classe at the back end. He, this year, was the best closer in baseball, and it wasn't even close. I mean, and he's pretty amazing to watch. It's actually kind of incredible he doesn't strike out more guys. But he he makes up – it's a 101-mile-an-hour cutter. It's pretty amazing to watch. So, But if they can't do that 
four times in this series. I don't know how other how what other ways they win because it's not like they're going to smother you with bats. I you know? I got to be honest, and we talked about this off air, Luke, uh, about twenty five thirty minutes ago. I do the I do the uh, power rankings every week, so I try and keep up to date with teams. All of a sudden, the the Guardians they had one bad patch for about a fifteen game stretch. They might have gone five and ten or something like that, mm-hmm. but they were really consistent throughout the season. And now we're in the playoffs, and I go, okay, Tanner Bybee's starting, and Matt Boyd starts and pitches for two innings, and Cobb pitches two innings, and I'm going, where's the starters? <laughs> and there's nobody. I, that guy, Ben Lively, I know, had a inning seeding season. Right. And he was pretty darn good as a number three, four guy, but he's nowhere to be found right now. Evan Williams is not there. Mm-hmm. Tristan McKenzie is not there. I don't know how Stephen Vogt won 95 games with this team. Uh, I think he won 92, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So uh, they were on pace to win more than 95 games for a while, but like a yeah. lot of other top teams, they slow down in the second half. So, yeah. 92. Yeah, 92 yeah, and I thought that was kind of a reach. Yeah. As like, a, I, yeah, it was a hope yeah. And a they, they needed a, a more established, a yeah. healthy starter, kind of like a Jack Flaherty. Yeah, he would have been a great help for them, yep. or even like a Zach Eflin would have been a great help for them. But I don't think Cleveland wanted to take on Eflin's salary. Nope, um, they did not. You know, I like Tanner Bybee, but for me, he's a little more of a thrower than a pitcher at this point in his career. He's a great arm. Yeah, uh, I would one hundred percent take him on the Orioles. Don't don't get me wrong. Uh, but as a top of the rotation guy for a team that has hopes of winning the World Series, eh, I don't know. Uh, and then with Cobb, he's only thrown like this is only twenty five innings, twenty innings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and he'll be in uh, pitching in the Bronx today. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then it's a just. I, I just think the probably lean too you know, hard it's, on their t- it's time series, to interject to for, not to break away from talking about the yankee guardian series sure. but you and i've talked off air all the time this is sort of i'm not calling it a disgrace but i think baseball needs to look at the ra- the length of the playoffs the rapidity which they try and make sure like changing that game time saturday you know, mm-hmm. for the Detroit Cleveland game from a night game to a day game, I didn't even know it was changed. Okay. You started texting me and I thought you were asking my opinion who they were going to use tonight. And then I found out that the game was in the ninth inning, this stuff, and can't let one day go by because <laughs> it's not etched into their TV schedule. And we get Alex right. Cobb starting the first game of, of the seven game series, league championship series for the Indians, well, Guardians. We got Ryan Brazier starting game two. It's not exactly Mm -hmm. the best light baseball shows itself. It's not like Koufax and Drysdale and Osteen in 1966. Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it would be a lot more fun to see Tyler Glasnow on the mound than a parade of like eight or nine Dodgers relievers. That's for sure. And it's not like I mean I'm sure the Dodgers would like to have a starter to go seven scoreless like Jack Flaherty did yesterday. Right. I, I'm sure that one of them is Jack Flaherty. The other is Yamamoto, who and he's just might, come. And he's just come back from and, injury. You know, and he might be a five and dive uh, at most at this point. And then the other one is uh, Walker Bueller, who is a box of chocolates at this point in terms of yeah. You know, I think his stuff is mostly back from. Uh, Tommy John, command but the command like and pitchability is very hit or miss, and so you don't yeah. really know what you're going to get out of him. And then they have a bullpen game today for as like the four starter, so to speak. So yeah, it's not great, you know, in terms of a, being a showcase for the game. Yeah, I, I still think. Look, nobody loves going to the ballpark as much as me or watching on TV, but I think the 154 number is the right. No, you're number. probably right. Might even be it might even be one forty eight start the season in right. April, like April not 15th, late March. End it end it September fifteenth uh-huh. and then get your playoffs on and and have 
a more reasonable approach to your TV schedule for the playoffs. I mean, I found that thing that they did on Saturday. I get it. But how unfair is that to the fans that had been waiting for years to be at a championship series in Cleveland? And I don't know how they – what do they expect? that uh, Everybody's got it on their watch now or, you know, that somebody's going to call them and tell them that the game's been moved? I, I just – it was – Sort of astounding to me that they did. Anyway. I don't know. All right. Uh, back to the Guardians and the Yankees, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit about the Mets uh-huh. uh, and the um, and the uh, Dodgers. Uh, to me, this is a, a perhaps a not that the Yankees I don't think are that great, but this is a four to one or four to two series. Well, the one thing working in favor of the Guardians is that they do hit left-handed pitching well. Uh, and they brought in Lane Thomas from D.C., who's been a great addition for them. Uh, he had the big yes, blow yeah. in Game 5, the home run uh, off of Tar- Tarek Skubal. Uh, so he face... would have been a nicer addition than Eloy Jimenez. Yeah. Yeah, he would have cost a little bit more, but it uh, might have been worth it. Who knows? Uh, so they'll get Rodon in Games 1 and 5. So in two of the first five games, they'll face the Yankees left-hander. Uh, and I think they were actually a below-average hitting team against right-handed pitching, but well above average against left-handed pitching. So um, I can't remember off the top of my head whether Ramirez was a lot stronger from one side or the other. I'm guessing he's stronger right-handed based on those team stats. But um, So we'll see. All right. Uh, this series, um, the Mets have one thing really going for them. is just Sean Manaya is pitching at an elite level, right? Yep. And has been for a while. And has been for a good while. It's funny, as the season went on, I kept saying he would be a good guy because I liked him back when he was with Oakland. You yep. know, they got him from the the A's. I mean, they got him from the Royals. Yeah, I think he was trade. part of that. I forget who Zobris was. Zobris trade way back when? Which trade? Was it the Zobris trade way back when in 2015 to help him get over the I think it that's what might, it was. It might have been. I, he's been around. I mean, Manai's an older guy. I think he's like 32 or 33. He's yeah, been he's around. He's be 32, but I thought he would have been perfect for the Orioles. He might still be. Yards. Yeah. He would be, except I don't imagine Steve Cohn or David, David Stearns are anxious to let him go. No, you're probably right. Yeah. You're probably right. But yeah, he'd be a good fit. Yeah. No question about it. Um, but they've got him going. And uh, after that, the rotation, it's interesting. They, I thought I would have done the exact opposite last night. If David Peterson was your piggyback with Senga, I would have started mm-hmm. Peterson in the game last night. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Now he's, he's lost still game four. Right. And you might be down 2-1 or 3-1. Right. Time. And he's yeah. been one of their better arms this season. Yeah. He's really uh, picked up his game. Uh, last feel, uh, command, lefty, and his stuff is really picked up this year. Uh, much crisper, much sharper. The Mets that Elias picked up, it was a prospect. And he was not the equal to Peterson. He was a year or two younger than Peterson. Oh, uh, I remember. I know exactly. Was that the Cairo time. trade? Was that the Miguel Cairo trade? Miguel Castro. Castro. Uh, yeah, uh, he's um, out of the organization. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about now. But he, I thought he was like a highly thought of. I think he was a sneaky prospect at the but, time. Uh, but the but the but Peterson has become a very solid Kevin Smith pitcher. Kevin, Kevin Smith. Smith. Yeah. And so I think he lasted in the organization for a couple of years and then they just let yeah. him go. So. Yeah. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, this series could be very interesting because, as you said much earlier. The Mets do have the advantage in starting pitching, which if they can eke out a victory today, Brazier pitched one inning, by the way. Right. And Knack is now in. So uh, Dave Roberts is going to try and. He'll earn his money today. What's that? He said he'll earn his money today. He'll earn his money today. All right. Jesse Winker at the plate right now made one of the, it's not one of the all time base running blunders. Because the game, the score was yeah, they're already, down six nothing. But... They're down six nothing, but the guy he got on to lead off an inning, and then there's a hit, right? And I don't know what he was doing. He had third base made easily, and he got faked because the 
the runner, the thrower looked like he was going to throw to third base. So he doubled back and then the guy yeah. threw to second base. Yeah, it was, it was one off. of those situations where either second or third would have been fine. If you just want to stop at second, you're down by six. That's fine. If you want to stop at second. But if you want to take third to try to uh, get a run more easily, that's also fine. He chose neither. He chose the middle. Yeah. And so and he got thrown out. So. All right. So a week from now, we'll be back on the air. You think we're looking at a Dodgers uh, a Dodgers and Yankees closing in on being in the World Series a week from now? Or do you think we can get surprises? Uh, I think the Yankees win in six. And I I, I really could see this NLD, uh, NLCS going either way. Uh, not to okay. you know, not answer the question. But. Mamea, uh, Manaya is the wild card there for the Mets. If he pitches a dominant game, now and they can eke out another victory in game three or four he comes back in five or six it's it's it'd be interesting yeah i mean he uh has a a claim for being you know one of the three or four best pitchers in the national league from about the all-star break on yeah yeah uh, he, he really does and, and the orioles got to look at that i want to say what it was uh mid august late august whenever that was um yeah all right and it was at that time he said, you know, he'd be a really good pickup yeah. for the Orioles. And he uh, has since made himself more expensive. Yeah. Since he's a th- he's a three year, sixty million dollar guy now. He, mm-hmm. I, think he, and Flaherty, on there. I yeah. think he and Flaherty are about on par with each other now. And yeah. I expect and Flaherty's them, younger, so maybe he gets an extra year or two. But, I expect yeah. them both to be be with the teams that are pitching for right now. I can see that. Yeah, I don't think Flaherty is going to want to go anywhere. He's a Southern California guy. He's probably dreamed about pitching for the Dodgers and and the Dodgers. Or before, they're probably going to need a six man rotation next year because Otani is going to need extra time, and then Yamamoto needs extra time between starts. So they're going to need to find some starting pitching yep. this off season. And I I don't think the, maybe Dean maybe Dean maybe Dean you know, maybe maybe Dodgers. trade Dean Kramer for uh who Mookie Betts. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make that deal? Uh, all right, that's going to do it for today. Uh, we appreciate uh, the Costas in, as always, for being there for us. Uh, Luke and I will be back with Ross Grimsley next Monday, barring no more hurricanes of any great magnitude in Florida. Uh, again, uh, congrats to the Ravens for a big win yesterday. Gary Stein and I are not doing another Zoom this week. Uh, he and I will most likely be back next week. As all right, if not, I'll go solo with a special guest. That's going to do it for today. For Luke Jackson, stand the fan.